Okay, what I ended up doing is, like I said, 16th of the aircraft ply, top and bottom. And you won't see that once I put the once I put the horn on. And I might uh, put some covering on it. I think I have enough bits and pieces here to do it. I took the uh, heavy duty horn and cut, made a, uh, I guess this would be considered right hand, horns on the right, uh, horn out of it by cutting the foot off the right side. So I got a foot on the left, two screws, eh, they're so far over I was a little concerned. So I drilled a third hole, I lined up the center here and the thick thick part of the, the horn here. Lots of beef there. So I put a third hole in it so I could get a 440 screw to tap its way into the, the horn. So now I got three points that's bolted on. This thing's designed for uh, quarter scale and up airplanes. So it's uh, probably overhill kill. But the only thing is I wanted, I didn't want the, the force of this thing being all transferred out here so I put another screw in the middle there just to fix that up so I'm using piano wire 440 uh, threaded adapter soldered onto it a 440 uh, 256 uh, ball link so it's 440 thread here 256 screw in the link itself that's all hooked up like I mentioned, I put the third screw right underneath the the horn. Now I got it clamped off with some balsa so I used there. The, uh, the uh, horn that came with the kit on the elevator because I'm limited to the amount of room there. And uh, the second hole is the same height as the third hole. Uh, giant scale horns. So. Also decided I'm going to use an arrow shaft for a push rod. This is nice and strong instead of using the uh, garbage that it came with. So I get these uh, push rod end fittings from Dave Brown products and I also you can buy the, actually the whole set, but you can buy these separately as well. Especially in control line, because one full length will probably do two or three planes. So I'm just going to do that up and carry on, soldier. Now what I'm going to do that's not in any instructions or anything, is I get the Dell. I'm going to sand up the inside here, so the epoxy. Got some grooves and stuff to bite on to and the uh, end fitting I'm going to scruff that up as well give that epoxy some grooves and roughness to clamp on to there so I just throw a there we go Drill a hole in the uh, arrow shaft and you slide this thing in after you slap some epoxy on there. And uh, there's a, my exaggerated 90 to go into the horn. And then once I get that all set up, with my 332nd wire, I'll nip it off for the other end, which I'll probably use this uh, 440 threaded rod. And a clavis makes it all adjustable. Just kind of showing you what I did there before. A blob on that 90 there. Now, because this is all threaded, I'm going to put a pretty good coating of it on those threads where the that end fitting is going to be 
It'll push most of it off, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There, get her all hooked up. The uh, 440 rod and all. Now I noticed when I looked at, uh, I watched the video of Shug flying his, I noticed he had this cut out and he has the arrow shaft or carbon fiber tube as well. And he had a notch the flap. I have to do the same thing to get it to clear. Which is really not that big of a deal. Don't really like doing it, but oh well. But there it is, all hooked up. That was a lot better setup than what it came with. So I did end up gluing that little piece back in there. And I uh, sanded this uh, vertical fin to fit. And I put a while I was fitting it, I was uh, using a ruler just to make sure everything stayed nice and straight. Not that there's much straight on this, this peg, but I ah, hope it flies as good as people say they do. So. Yeah, my next time I'm just gonna epoxy that on. Just to make sure any gaps are filled and it gives me time to make sure it's uh, nice and vertical. Epoxy it is. I was gonna use five, but uh, yeah, too much rushing around. Fun and games. Well, I guess my next step. Now this epoxy's all dry. I let it dry overnight. Kind of tired, so I went. Took it easy. So with the rudder flush at the bottom of the fuselage, I got quite a peak here, which is good. I can round off. This gaudy looking shape on the top, it, it doesn't look nice. I don't like the look of that at all. And I may do a little squaring up on the trailing edge. It's a good thing they gave me that chunk of green uh, covering. And I'll make this a little more presentable. There, got a corrective bold spot on the top. And a uh, filler for the gap. I would have been sticking down quite a bit more from the bottom. Still got a bit of a flat spot here, but not much I can do about that. That's good enough for this turd anyway. Just uh, cover that up and glue the bugger yeah. on. Ain't perfect, but I, I think it looks a lot better um, than it did. With that weird uh, way, we just kind of came straight up to a point. So, fortunately, it was a little bit on the deep side. Not allowed to uh, allow me to correct it somewhat. It's still kind of got a flat spot here, but oh well, that's life. So, and I put a little filler piece in here. Not much to go on about here with the tail wheel. I had to uh, redraw the hole and I think there's just some glue or something in there. There. That one in there nice. A little bead on either side. There. 
Well, since there is nothing in the, uh, the kit for a horn, I made one out of plywood. Glued it in, covered it with some scrap that came with the, the uh, earth. Got a half a control horn I'm going to screw in here. And I'm just making up a, some threaded rod here for a link to go between the two. That'd be it. Easy breezy. Done. Plywood horn. The arf clevis that I had carrying around. And a half A horn screwed into the side of the fuselage. Takes care of that. So I had to do a few modifications. I had to cut a, a notch out. And hog that out for clearance for the battery cable. So that fits in there without having a big uh, 90 degree jam stuck there. So got that cleared out and set up. And something that kind of bugs me about electrics is all this bare wood. I won't see it in here so much, but well, as you can see, I slapped some zinc chromate on there just to get rid of the bare wood look. And I did blend in nicely with the rest of the airplane. So now that's all dry. My next step is to put the uh, power plant in. So what I'm going to be using here, uh, got myself a 60 amp. That's what they recommend for that motor. So I get a 60 amp E-Flight uh, speed controller. And everything's already set up pretty good for that. So I don't want to do any solder. And this thing got a switch on it. So I'm going to have to come up with a place to mount that I guess and I'm gonna use the uh, as usual the uh, care governor for the profile and what I've been doing with these lately normally you solder this right to one of the the leads on the timer but what I've been doing is taking a servo um, connectors, you get them in a kit, and soldering the male onto the, the governor. And the female, I just solder, I got to do it with this one, I'll show you later. I'll just solder, remove the insulation probably from that one, doesn't matter which one. Uh, well, I'm, because this is black, I'll move, remove the insulation and just solder a female in there. And then just plug it in instead of having it soldered on solid. Because if anything happens, if if you want to use a spare and you got things soldered in, you're shit out of luck. And these are the, uh, these are the servo uh, f uh, connectors I use to uh, set up that care governor the way I do. You're going to have to balance it. So I'll get busy doing that. So I got the prop all balanced and the spinners on. Looks alright. Not quite centered this, this nose. If, you know, if I had some covering it probably it's flat here so the fellow could actually put a piece of balsa in there and dome it a bit. Um, Kind of reaching the point where I'm getting a little tired of screwing around with it, but it looks good enough. Maybe later I'll do that, or it's looking pretty good, especially from this side, the uh, non battery side. Yeah, coming along quite nicely. Well, the fun games have begun programming this 60 amp E flight. Um, electronic speed controller with the uh, the uh, 32 power e-flight motor. Hey, had a fair
triggered it if I'm not a uh, electronics geek by any stretch of the imagination, but I did figure out a couple of things. And to make, I'm using the uh, KR, I'll show you here, the uh, KR Governor Timer. I bought this from, uh, from RSM. And I ran into a few little things trying to set it up. I bought one of these things. It's a uh, servo tester. And I'm using the dial as a throttle. And that, I tried using it with power and a switch here. Didn't work with a dam. Just nothing would work. So I accidentally forgot to turn the switch on. And when I plugged the battery in, and this particular speed controller, the E-Flight speed controller, has an on-off switch. So when I turned it on, um, this thing worked fine. But when you hook the power up to it, it doesn't work at all. Which I thought it would, but it, because of it behaving like a servo, but no, no, it wouldn't work worth a damn. So anyway, I plugged it in, found out everything works, and that's how you program it by moving this from middle to full throttle. First thing you figure out is which is idle, which I found out is here, and full throttle is here. And then the middle is where you go through all these steps to program this thing. And I'll tell you, the older you get, the worse your memory gets, and reading this shit gets. So, in the end, I got it sorted out. So what I set up was the, was the brake. The, uh, they don't want it. I put a medium brake on it's, and uh, that seems to be working um, frequency I didn't touch because they recommend you just leave it alone um, but the operating mode I changed that just to verify I had a feeling it might have been a helicopter so I, I set it up to normal which is airplane the other thing I set up was a throttle input range because when I hooked the timer up, it would not work. And this is the programming uh, switch for the for the uh, care governor. So I increased the range from 1.1 milliseconds to 1.9, whatever the hell that means, from 1.2 to 1.8. Bang! Oh, way she goes. So. It might have been a little too tight because I noticed using the dial, like here's off, and I was like damn near quarter way or third way in before she started turning. So lucky me for figuring that out. And the combination, I think, of doing that and setting this up got this thing to work. Ah, it's, uh, fun part is anything goes wrong here let's try and remember all this shit but this once these uh, speed controllers are set up you're you're pretty much good to go so my next step is I figure I'll charge the battery up and this is a 3200 which will work good I gotta figure out which battery although the weights on the lower milliamp batteries are actually a little higher this one was 12.2 ounces this is 12.3.1 ounce in the difference. And these are 3200s. Here's a uh, 2700s, which is pretty much what they recommend, and that's like 12.8, 12.8, 12 12.1. Yeah, shouldn't make that much difference. And I got these 2500s, and they're 10.3 don't know if they'd be sufficient because I'm gonna set them up for maybe a so for a six minute flight because you know, just probably what I'm gonna need to do the pattern judging by the smoothie yeah so see how I may go with the rest of this the RPMs the next thing I'm gonna set and I get a little bit of concerns about that but they do seem to have adjustments uh, you make the timing I don't know if that would affect anything this is beyond my geekdom. 
Now, the throttle input range is done, start up rate is done, brake is done, voltage cut off, I did that. It has, it's set up for 74%, so whatever you plug your battery in, say your battery's low and you plug it in, it'll, keep, it'll murder that battery until it gets 70, down to 75% of the current voltage. So I went in there and I set this up for four cells, so I know if I pull a groaner and stick a battery in there that's not quite up to snuff, it'll uh, kill it. It'll probably do it in an overhead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you can see, I'm gone with the British scheme. Because everybody and their dogs got flying tires. And the Brits did use, and Canada as well, use the uh, P40B. Uh, of course, both countries used all the P40s, I believe. But the uh, the bars for the vertical fin, nothing I got. The, the ones that came with the kit don't fit properly. So here we go, making up my own. So I just got some white. I already cut the strip. I'm using these Brodac decals. These are uh, water slide. Those are pretty much the right size. They're not going to be perfect, but they're close enough. So I'm just making up a set of this uh, deckle sheets to uh, make one up. So, so all I did here was basically went an inch in each one. It's a little bit big looking, but thing and none of this is scale anyway in the plane. So 100%. So each one's an inch. Between here and here is an inch, so one eighth of an inch, so inch and a quarter in this. Just overlap and stuck them on like that. And I just trim them up. Nice and true, like that. And then uh, that's it. British decals that'll fit the fin. There we have one British version of the Tomahawk. Um, and the early versions, I think the British and the Americans both called them Tomahawks. And then later on, the British named them the Kitty Hawk. I think the Yanks went with the War Hawk, it seems. But there she is. That uh, does look a little big, but on the full-size plane that's kind of how they did it but where the vertical fan on this thing is uh, so off scale it uh, you can see how it followed the trailing edge of the vertical fan and then it kind of nipped off there but where this model is is kind of porky there on the vertical fin so she didn't, didn't quite match but good enough Straight and flat. No, well, looks like we got her. Um, so I had to give her a pretty good twist like that, further out, and hold it, of course, till this cools right off. Because if you don't, it, it'll just walk its way back. Yeah, so looks like we got her. Uh, although my flap does seem to have a, a little tweak in it but we'll uh, see what it looks like when I take this off yep and then I did my usual drill the hole in the back here now you gotta watch with these P40s these are hollow looks like they're like a built up profile so to speak there's a hollow spot here but I just put a hardwood dowel in there a the hole drill did it and that way I can screw on the, the weights and I'll just, I got some scrap covering, I'll just fix that up. And I put this airplane on the, on the, uh, balancing rig over there. Let's see her right there. And she balanced perfect. So, <laughs> yeah, she's just like bang on. So I didn't have to do anything with it, which is good. But as you fly it, you may may need to do a little tweaking on it so yeah 
So hopefully I can uh, just scratch this off the list. And I was hoping to fly it tonight, but it's too late and I gotta work tomorrow, so. And I was blowing today. It was a real windy day here in Alberta, Canada. So I just patch up some of these groaners here with the covering and I'm gonna take this flap horn off and put some covering on that too just to perky that up and shorten this bolt up. The little things now. Well, there she is, one P40B Tomahawk. All finished. A little on off switch, I decided to just velcro that little bugger on there. As well as the uh, air governor is all velcroed on. This is velcroed on as well, but I also naturally, of course, I use a, a strap and then the a weird colored bright orange or green uh, <laughs> strap that comes with uh, with the earth tidied up the plywood and everything I put here to for the mounting that horn shortened up the long screw uh, covered the hardwood dowel there for the right there for the uh, for the weight which it doesn't need it balanced perfect two and a half inches I mean it's just beautifully just a smidge on the nose heavy side which is fine but it just stayed there if you tilted it either way it tended to go towards the nose more than that. that's with the back in it 3200 milliamp so this airplane is ready to fly yeah the uh, Hoping it flies as good as everybody says it does. After all that tweaking, and fixing, and modifying, and adjusting, yeah, pretty looking airplane.